Okay, guys, if you're at home, I forgot to press record when I read the class story yesterday. So this is the bit that I read to the class yesterday to catch you up. It's chapter 37 of Frost Hollow Hall and it's called A Fierce Attachment. Lady Barrington was stood by the window with her back to me. The air felt thick and close and for the very first time I noticed a strong smell of stale bed sheets and unbeaten carpets. The chairs were still set for the seance though the dishes and black cloths had been cleared. Kit's boots were here, his open books, his folded clothes. A lump formed in my throat as it hit me all over again. This room was so full of sadness. What a commotion outside, Gracie, Lady Barrington said, her back still turned. And is that blood I can see down there in the snow? Whatever's happened? A boy got bit, your ladyship. Her shoulders tensed at my voice. She turned round slowly, knowing I wasn't Gracie at all. What in heaven's name? I put the coal bucket down. And as I went towards her, she threw up her hands in panic. Come any closer and I'll scream. I mean no harm, but please, you must listen. She looked feverishly ill and very capable of screaming the whole house down. You've done enough harm already, now get out! But I have to talk to you, I said, about Kit. Why should I listen to you? You're a charlatan, just like Madame Martineau. I've nothing to do with her. Lady Barrington tossed her head. Of course you are. She sent you here, didn't she? You should be ashamed of yourself, playing with people's grief. I bit back my words. She'd employed the blooming medium, not me though it wouldn't help to say so. I tried again. The day I went through the ice, I should have drowned. It's a miracle I didn't, and that's because Kit saved my life. She blinked. Her hand went to her cheek. What exactly do you mean? I knew I'd got her then. Kit's spirit haunts the lake, I said. He's cold and restless because there's a truth that ain't been told. Her ladyship froze. Her face drained of colour and she sank into a nearby chair. I wondered if I'd said too much, too quick, but I wasn't about to stop now. And he comes to me in my dreams almost every night. You dream of him? Every night? Yes, your ladyship. She looked stunned. And what does he speak of? How does he seem? Like an angel, I so wanted to say. And it might have brought comfort, but it wasn't the whole truth. Well, he ain't happy. He wants me to help him so he can be at peace. You? Yes, I said uneasily. But why you when I, his own mother, dream of nothing? It was a question I'd asked myself too. She shut her eyes in a long, painful blink. When she looked at me again, her gaze was clear. I knew from the moment I saw you, didn't I? You bear a striking resemblance to her. My stomach lurched. She meant Ada, of course. Kit was very fond of poor Ada, she said shakily. Too fond, probably, but then he got that from his mother. It's our weakness, you see, to form these fierce attachments. I felt my cheek flush. Kit had held my hands tightly. He'd even saved my life. Surely that meant I was a fierce attachment too. Lady Barrington continued. When Mrs Jessop's husband died, we agreed to take both her and Ada on. She came to us with glowing references and for all her ways... She's proved herself a remarkable housekeeper. Anger stirred in me. Mrs Jessop was remarkable, all right. If her ladyship had an inkling of what she'd really done, she'd get rid of her like a shot. Just like she'd done with me. It was on the tip of my tongue to tell her, but I held back. It could wait. Now that I'd got Lady Barrington talking, I didn't want to throw her off course. Only Ada and Kit became fir firm friends. She was like family to him, almost the sister he never had. I didn't really approve of it, but it seemed harmless enough at first. Her ladyship paused, clearly troubled. Over time, they became inseparable, she said eventually. It started to cause problems. People didn't know their rightful place. You have to understand, Kit was heir to a fortune, and Ada was destined to be a maid. Such an attachment couldn't continue forever. Nothing would ever come of it, don't you see? She fell silent. My gaze drifted away from her, to the unmade bed, the too hot fire, this shrine to her beloved Kit. This was her fierce attachment, wasn't it? Even to me, who knew how special Kit was, it all felt too much. You find it strange, she said, watching me? Most people do, even those who've lost someone dear. 
They might wear a locket or keep a curl of hair, but the thing I wanted most of his had vanished. This is how I keep him close. It still seemed mawkish somehow. What was it, this thing you wanted? I asked. She sighed. A gold ring we'd given him for his birthday. My heart stopped. It was a beautiful thing, she said, made from family gold with his name engraved inside it. I know, I thought, I know. He wore it on his little finger. He swore he'd never take it off. But when they found his body, he wasn't wearing it. It had gone. I had hoped one day he'd pass it on to someone special, someone very dear to him. She frowned. We even checked that he'd not somehow given it to Ada. I wanted to cry out, but he did give it to someone dear to him. He gave it to me. Because I saw more than ever now what that ring really meant. And when I thought of what had happened to it, I could have died of shame. If only I'd returned it to Lady Barrington right at the start. Instead, it was most probably in a pawn shop somewhere or stashed away in Eliza's trunk. And now, with your story, said her ladyship, maybe it fits that there is part of him still out there in the lake. She fell quiet then, though her hands fidgeted madly in her lap. Kit says there's a truth that needs revealing, I said. Lady Barrington shuddered. Ah, oh, yes, the truth. A sharp knock at the door stopped her. She passed a hand across her brow, calling out, Not now, please. The knocking carried on. Her ladyship rolled her eyes. What on earth is it? As the door opened, my heart sank. It was Mrs Jessop, and she looked ready to wring my neck. Forgive me, your ladyship, she said then sharply to me. You were told to wait downstairs. A look of alarm crossed Lady Barrington's face, as if I might well be a trickster after all. Then she said, Mrs Jessop, you'd better come in and sit down. We're discussing something that involves you, and we should have done it long ago. Mrs Jessop blanched, but she collected herself and took a seat next to her ladyship. You too, Lady Barrington ordered me. I sat down. My palms were sweating. Matilda has news of my son, said Lady Barrington. Mrs Jessop turned pale. She knew nothing of my dreams, of course. She reckoned I was about to spill her secret, to tell her ladyship what I'd read on that torn out page. And I was dying to. Only not yet. Please continue, Matilda, said her ladyship. Their eyes were on me. My mouth went dry. Here I was, a tatty little housemaid. Only I couldn't even call myself that anymore. Why the heck should they listen to me? Yet they were waiting for me to speak. I had to hold my nerve. Chapter 38, A Mother's Love. The room was airless. It made my head hurt and I felt my frock turning damp under the arms. Can you think of why Kit's not at peace, your ladyship, I said, bold as I could. Mrs Jessop coughed. Lady Barrington shot her a dark look. Seeing the pair of them sat inches apart like this, I could almost taste the ill will between them. Kit was loved. More than any boy could ask for, she said. But it's strange his ghost never comes to you. You said so yourself. Her ladyship stiffened. I glanced over at Mrs Jessop, who hadn't moved an inch. But now a red flush was creeping up her neck. We had an argument, said Lady Barrington. His last words to me were, her lip trembled. Well, let's just say they were cross words. I sat forward at this. Strange how Mrs Jessop's notebook spoke of mother and son all cosy together at breakfast. Yet Lady Barrington's account was different. What did you fight about? Lady Barrington stared at me. Ada. Mrs Jessop gasped. The room was too hot. If only I could open a window. Let me finish, Mrs Jessop, she said, though the housekeeper hadn't yet spoken a word. There is an angry spirit in this house, and though it upsets me to say so, I might know why. Mrs Jessop had her hands over her face. I don't want to hear this, she said. Please stop. But you must, Lady Barrington insisted, because maybe, maybe Ada's angry with me. And she'd have reason to be, I reckoned, struck again by what Lady Barrington had done on the day Kit died. You kept her from Kit and her own flipping mother. You let her die all by herself. Whose side was I on now? 
I didn't have the faintest idea. For a long moment, we sat in stunned silence. A steady dripping noise came from the gutters outside. Eventually, Lady Barrington turned in her seat. She glanced at the window, then back at me and Mrs Jessop. Touching the brooch at her throat, she took a deep breath. Mrs Jessop, please believe me when I say this, her ladyship said. Kit loved your Ada, really, he did. Yet he loved her too much for a boy with his responsibilities. It wasn't right for them to be so close. It couldn't go on. It was uncomfortable to hear, though by now I reckoned it was near to the truth. Mrs Jessop's hands dropped away from her face. Her ladyship took it as a sign to keep talking. When Ada got sick, Kit was desperate to see her. He'd made a gift for her and he so wanted her to have it. They'd worked on it together, you see. She glanced quickly at me. At the seance, I took something out of a cupboard. Do you remember? I nodded. Of course I remembered it. Well, that package was Kit's gift to Ada. I kept it all this time. You see, Kit didn't care about the infection, not in the slightest. I went cold all over. Oh no. All he wanted was to see Ada and give her his gift, her ladyship said. But I forbade him to go. He begged me to say where she'd been sent, but I wouldn't tell him. He'd have just gone there anyway. I knew he would. I could hardly bear to look at Mrs Jessop. I was terrified for him, Lady Barrington sounded choked. Children in the village were dying and I saw how fearful you were, Mrs Jessop. But when Kit knew how ill Ada really was, he grew incensed. There's danger everywhere, he said to me. I have to see her. You can't protect me forever. Mrs Jessop slumped in her seat. He was in a rage and then he went out on that ice just to spite me. Just to prove his point, her ladyship said. I don't know what he was thinking of. Mrs Jessop's face was wet with tears. What did I do, she whispered. What on earth did I do? Her ladyship looked confused. I don't quite understand. It was agony. I'd rather have watched them tear each other's eyes out because I knew what was coming next and I almost begged Mrs Jessop to keep her secret where it was since I wondered what good it might do now. Mrs Jessop squared her shoulders. The tears still fell, but her voice was steady. She raised her chin as she met Lady Barrington's gaze. It made her look defiant and so like Ada. I did a most awful thing that day. I've lived with the guilt ever since. Lady Barrington leaned forward as if to comfort her, but she pulled away. Please, let me explain. Tilly knows what I did, how awful it was. Lady Barrington looked at me, then back at Mrs Jessop. I felt sick to the pit of my stomach. I saw Kit out there skating that day. And I knew it wasn't safe, but I was so angry with you. And I thought, she paused, that Kit didn't want to see Ada, that he'd forgotten her. I was angry with him too. I wasn't thinking properly. I never, I never meant to. She broke off, sobbing. Lady Barrington sat back in her seat. There was no attempt to comfort Mrs Jessop now. What are you trying to tell me? her ladyship said coldly. Mrs Jessop took a big, shuddery breath. The ice was too thin for skating on. I could see that, even from where I was on the path. I should have shouted to him. Not a day's gone by when I haven't wished I did, because don't you see, if I'd warned him, he most probably would have survived. But instead, I pretended I hadn't seen him. I walked straight past. And when I came by the lake again, he was already dead. She let out a cry and I did try to revive him. I did try to pull him free, but I couldn't. And that's where we finished. OK, so next time I read to the class, I will record it. I will remember and I'll upload it for you. We're so close to the end, guys. All right. See you all soon. Bye.